Power Query very often breaks because of header names. There are lots and lots of Power Query steps that refer to the column names, maybe more than you think, and that is very often going to change it. So let's say here I've gone from active with a lowercase a to active with an uppercase a, and I've also got a space at the end that I've removed. So if in my source data, I change this to active, spelled the right way, if I refresh this one, it breaks. If I refresh this one though, it does not break. It works perfectly fine. Now we're going to go to two steps to making this robust. So two options. The first one is absolutely no code and works for most instances. The second one has a bit of code and works for all instances. So to get from here to the Power Query Editor, I'm going to click on this table, go to Data from Sheet, and I launch my Power Query Editor. This is not an intro to Power Query. It's an amazing tool. If you want that, I have another video covering it. I'm going to dive right in and assume that you know Power Query quite well. So I'm going to have two setting changes. The first one is I don't like this change type appearing. Uh, and the other one is I want the formula bar up here. So go to File, Options and Settings, and Query Options. And then I'm going to choose a type detection. I don't like it automatically doing this because it does refer to the column name, so never detect it. And then I'm going to go to the Power Query Editor and tick this one, display the formula bar. By the way, other settings that I think you must have are this one and data load. For more advanced people, choose specify custom default load settings and untick both. Because if you are using a lot of merging, you don't want them loading most of the time. My name is David Lyme and I have loads of videos on my channel about Excel, Power BI, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using tech at the workplace, I'm covering it on my channel. So now that I have my formula set up, I can untick this one and let me show you what goes on. So if I drag gender over here, I am now referring to every single column name just by doing one move for reordered columns. If I want to, for example, make this a lowercase d, I am renaming just that column. And if I want to remove columns, then I am also referring to the names of the columns. So I don't want any of these, and I want to go through all these transformations. So for the no-code method, let's call it no-code, I'm going to start off with these steps. So I'm going to click the down arrow there, use headers as first row. I'm going to go to transform and transpose. And this way, my header row is now in column one, <laughs> which is great because I can do all of these things to column one that are row level actions not column level actions. For example, I have this active with a trailing space at the end. I can just click on the column, go to transform format, and I can say trim to get rid of the trailing space. And I can also say format and capitalize each word. So trim is great. It gets rid of any space before and any space after your text. And then I don't like date appearing uppercase. So I'm going to click on this one and I'm going to choose replace values and every time where it says date with an uppercase I'm going to change that to date with a lowercase press OK so replace is another thing you cannot do and another one is filtering so I want to remove the columns but instead of referring to all the columns that I keep or that I remove I can use the filters here now you might be tempted to just take them all like that but that does refer to the exact name. And if something is slightly differently, it won't work. So a slightly more robust way of doing this is if you do text filters, does not contain. And over here, I'm going to say does not contain, let's say for example, nationality. Your casing should be fine here because you already changed the casing earlier on. And then advanced, I'm going to choose a few more. So over here, I have my data and I have used the filter one and it's a little bit more robust than it would be otherwise. And then next we have sorting. So for sorting, go to add column and column from examples. The good thing about this is that it is just a hack to quickly reorder your columns, to quickly type in anything in this column. So I could say column one and then column two, column three and press OK. And there I have my order and I can click here and sort by it. And then I can click on this column, delete it. It's safe to delete that because it has just auto-generated the name custom. 
So I have my data the way that I want it. Now I'm pretty much done. I just go to transform and then transpose back and then use headers as first row. And then it's not auto detecting the data type. I would usually just click on the columns that I want the data type detected. So the two date columns and make them dates, not date time, but date is better. And the numerical column make that a whole number. So I would just change the data types of the column names that I'm going to keep. So I still need to change my column types and I'm only going to do that in the quintessential ones. So the two date columns I'm going to go to transform and data type is date. And then for the age one, I'm going to click here and choose whole number. Now I am referring to just a couple of my headers and it's that's why it's not ideal. That's one of the reasons. But the main reason why you want to use the second method potentially is because you might have loads of rows. Here I've got 18 rows of data. So that will mean 19 columns because one for the header rows. But if I have 10,000 rows of data, this is just not practical. So the other method, we're just going to right click this and choose to duplicate it. Then go right click from demoted headers and choose delete until end. So we start off with our same source. And here what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a custom code by clicking on this and saying table dot column names. This one, press tab and then source. Well, the custom code might look intimidating, but I will write all of it in the description down below. And also, if you want a copy of this workbook, then subscribe to my channel and leave me a note and I'll send you one. So in this one, I'm not going to call it no code. I'm going to call it with code. And here I've just got my list of headers. Now I'm going to next say to table. Just press OK with the standard settings. And next I'm going to go to add column and duplicate the column. I'm going to rename these so I can either do them in here or in the code. So I'm going to say original new. Next, we're going to go through pretty much the same standard steps that we did, but just on this column. So transform, we're going to format, trim, format, capitalize each word. I am going through these very, very fast, but I already explained them. <laughs> so, and we're going to choose the filters. And with the filters here, you can customize it to be whatever you want. So if you if you want something that is not exact, you can even go to add column and column from examples and do that trick that we did of just renaming it to absolutely anything that you want. We're going to do that again for sort order. So I might not be exactly the same as before, but I'm just kind of arbitrarily writing some numbers down in it. Control enter will lock that in and then here I can sort it. So next up is the data types and the first part of that is to create an example of what the data type should be. So I'm going to go to add column and conditional column. I'm going to say if new contains, always try and use contains, dates, it's okay to have that lower case. Then I'm going to just give it a date. So 5th of March, 2021, and then add clause if new contains age, then just a number. And then I'm going to say the logical one. So active. Then I'm going to say true in uppercase. And here I'm going to just put in whatever text. It doesn't really matter. This is just an example. And then the magic happens in the next step, which does use custom code. Go to custom column and say equals value dot type and custom one, close that. And we're going to actually rename this to type because this one we're going to keep it. And if I click on it, you can see what it's done. So it's actually just looked at this and determined the type and held the type as a data type here. So next I'm going to remove the other columns. So click on these ones, hold down control, right click, remove other columns. And these are the things that I wanna keep. So this is the main method. Now we're going to essentially try and go to the source and make that these column headers with this data type. So we're very almost there. We just need to now apply what we've done to the source up here. This final stage is going to involve the most custom code, but bear with me. I'll try and explain what I'm doing as I go along. So the first thing is I'm going to click on FX and I'm going to 
after this, I can just write a column of this table that I want to extract. So it refers to this. This is the previous step, the table in the previous step. I'm just going to say this is going to be original. And then I'm going to copy this without the equal sign and then click on FX again. And then I'm going to paste that. But instead of original, I'm going to write new. Uh, for good practice and for easier referral later on, I'm going to right click these and choose to rename them to original call and to new call. Beware with spaces. Try to avoid spaces because they made the code a bit more complicated and know when you have your upper and lower case. Then I'm going to do another uh, list, but this is going to be a zipped list. So a zipped list can contain multiple things in that list. So I'm going to say equals list dot zip. And I'm going to open my brackets and then in curly brackets, I'm going to write new call and then comma. And then I'm going to say, well, paste again. And I want here type. And then here, all of these has two things in it. So it has the name, the new name, and also the type associated with it. It does just say type, but it holds this as a data type that contains the type that I am transferring it to. So I've got all my building blocks and next let's build our final step. So here I'm actually going to use uh, three functions in this. So the first one is going to be table.selectColumns. And uh, it does this when you press tab sometimes. Make sure it doesn't say table twice. So open your brackets. And then for this one, I'm going to say the source and the original columns. This is essentially telling you that I only want these columns that I chose where I did the filtered rows here. So I wanna go from this number of columns to this one. You can see I removed nationality and over here, I've removed the nationality ones as well. So I'm going to do all these in one step, but I'm going to wrap them around. Uh, let's actually rename this to something more logical. So let's call this, let's say um, call types. So I'm going to next rename the columns and then add the types. So I'm going to say before the select columns, I'm going to do table dot rename columns, press tab, but that sometimes overwrites it. So I'm just going to type them out like this. So M IntelliSense gives you this. So table as table and renames as list. So for the list, I'm going to use my list.zip. So a comma. And then I'm going to say list.zip and then in brackets and then curly brackets, I'm going to write a ridge column and then a comma and then new column. So essentially I'm saying take the ones in here and rename them with the ones in here. Close my curly brackets and then close my other brackets once and then twice. And for my final step is I'm going to do Add another bit over here, and I'm going to say equals table dot transform column types like that, and then open my brackets. So I only want my open brackets there, and then the last part of this will be my column types, and then I will do comma and then call types. So call types is this step here or this list here and then press enter so almost there we do have this error <laughs> on the data type it converted age range to a date type which it shouldn't be doing so to fix that if i go back to this added additional column one i want to change this to instead of contains age to equals age also notice that it has made my dates look like this rather than 5th of march 2021 and that is actually going to cause another issue. If I press enter, it makes it look like this. So when I go back to custom, it is now putting these as text values. So I will need to 
change that as well back to 5th of March 2021. I'm not sure why it does that. It seems to be a bug in conditional columns when you have the output showing dates that it does that. But we fixed it and now we have done everything. We've renamed columns, we've fixed casing, we've reordered them, we've applied data types without referring to names a single time. And to prove that, if I change this to, for example, years, age, whatever I want to change it to, I can then go here and it's not broken. So this is a fantastic change and I love this. If you want something that where the data source might change column names, then I really recommend doing this method. So I hope you enjoyed that. My name is David Benheim and I have tons of videos on my channel about Power Query, Power BI, Excel, Google Sheets, PowerPoint, Zoom, Teams. If you're using tech at the workplace, then I'm covering it on my channel. So click the subscribe button to see more weekly videos. Thanks for watching.